so okay. So the answer to the second question is, is simply that RSA would be broken. Uh, so uh, you know, but, but, okay. So so let me. So so first, you know, let me be concrete about just you know just how fast you could you could do the things. Um, so. First of all, what is the best known classical algorithm for factoring? Uh, so the, the best known classical algorithm is called the number field sieve. You know, it's actually a lot better than just a naive uh, brute force search. And it searches, uh, and it's able to factor an n digit number in something like exponential in, in cube root of n steps. Okay? which is, you know, much better than exponential in n steps, right? So this is already, I'll put an O here, this is already uh, uh, what you can do classically, okay? Um, but, you know, but this, you know, uh, and this has been used to, I think, you know, factor, you know, well, certainly, you know, 128 bit, you know, I think even, you know, 128, like, decimal digit numbers, okay? Um, quantumly, we have Shor's algorithm, And Shor's algorithm actually, you know, needs only about n squared steps. Okay, maybe n squared log n or something. You know, it depends if you're if you're parallelizing it. You know, you can do even better. In fact, if you parallelize it, you can do it. You know, with in, in only logarithmic quantum parallel time plus polynomial classical post-processing time. Okay, so. Um, you know, in any case, it's, it's quite efficient. And certainly, you know, if you could implement this scalably, it's certainly efficient enough to render RSA, you know, an insecure crypto system. Okay, so, so you might wonder just, you know, just how bad would the damage be? So, okay, RSA would be broken. Uh, by using related al quantum algorithms, you could also break Diffie-Hellman. Um, elliptic curve cryptography would also be broken. Um, you know, the basic, basically any cryptography that's based on abelian groups would be broken, is the rule. Uh, uh, Shor's algorithm lets you sort of find out anything you might want to know about an abelian group in polynomial time. Okay, however, uh, an often unappreciated point is that there are public key crypto systems out there today that we don't know how to break efficiently, even with a quantum computer. Okay, and so the, the most important class of, of such crypto systems um, is the lattice-based crypto systems. Okay, and uh, for, for these, you know, the, uh, the underlying problem you have to solve involves non-abelian groups, and people have been trying to find quantum algorithms to break these systems for, you know, more than a decade, okay, and, and they haven't. Um, and, you know, these systems are, are, you know, they're not as practical as RSA because they require sort of large key sizes and large message sizes, okay, but they're attracting more and more interest these days. You know, one reason is that they, you know, they seem resistant even to quantum attack. A second reason is that just four years ago, uh, Craig Gentry discovered that you can use lattice-based cryptography to do what's called fully homomorphic in, uh, encryption. You can do arbitrary computations on encrypted data without ever having to decrypt the data. Okay, so lattice-based crypto has, you know, several remarkable properties. I think that if we ever get practical quantum computers, then, you know, you know, it, it, it's, it's quite possible that we'll all just switch over to lattice-based cryptography, okay? Or we could also switch over to quantum crypto. Okay, you know, we'd have two pretty good choices. So, you know, so this is a reason why I think that Shor's algorithm, as dramatic as it was, is actually not at all the most important practical implication if we get quantum computers. I would say the most important practical implication would probably be quantum simulation. You know, and maybe to a lesser extent, the sort of, you know, the sort of um, uh, modest speed ups that you could get for NP-hard optimization problems. 